Before we start, I want to mention a very nice technique to try out at home if you're following along and want to participate in this thing that I call introspective drawing, but you have no idea how to start. You can just take a sheet of paper and start drawing squiggles just as I'm doing right now and follow your hand follow what feels good don't overthink it and the more chaotic they are the better maybe you're already starting to feel out some shapes but if you don't that's no no problem anything can change at this stage and try and do not overthinking just have fun and then when you feel you got something good going on you can just start working on it and drawing now it's been a while and i just came back from a somewhat long break And every time you travel somewhere, you gain a lot of insight and experience. You call it wisdom. It's only, it's not only just the breaks that are important, like going to places. It's the life experience you're gaining in the process of it. What do I mean by that? So maybe for some of you, art is just a hobby or you're taking it more seriously and you're studying it every single day or almost every single day. You want to become a professional artist, right? Sometimes stepping away from art and from this rigorous study can be beneficial and you might be thinking what way beneficial what do you mean <laughs> i'm not practicing art how am i supposed to get better at art well see art is a reflection of you and if you as a person grow and if you gain some insight or wisdom about life in general or about your tastes it's going to naturally be reflected in your art. So you come back with a fresh perspective. Just as people expect you to change after coming back from a very long trip, your art is going to change as well. This is an advice or a fact or a sentiment uh, that I heard a few times back in the day when I was much younger, still studying a lot of art, still inexperienced, let's put it that way. I didn't really realize the importance of this. We didn't realize to what extent our character influences the art and the changes of character change our art. A lot of young aspiring artists want to start by picking a very, you know, rigid style. They, they start art, they have this idea, okay, I want to do comic book art in this style, like this one artist does. I want to do character design for mm, some game, <laughs> Magic the Gathering, who knows? And then they have this idea in their heads and they try to shape themselves into the idea of what they're supposed to be or of what they think they want to be instead of 
trying to develop their art from inside out. And there is a very major difference between those two. One has an extrinsic motivation, whereas the other is much more intrinsic. And you can reflect on that yourself and think, or conclude which one's the best for your particular case. Some people will call one illustration and the other one art, perhaps. And after they pick this style, they perfect the craft, they perfect their skills, they get better at it, but they lose something in the process. And what introspective drawing attempts to do is nurture that intrinsic motivation we have for art to kind of filter it out and combat this very productivity oriented society that we're living in. You have to perform, you have to complete it perfectly, right? Especially if you've been drawing um, commissions or drawing for other people, at some point you're going to lose that spark. And this is supposed to be the break to regenerate that spark. You see a lot of artists online, they have a very defined style, right? You could call it the artistic handwriting. And they stick to this style for years. This is how we recognize the people. This is how we recognize an art piece and say, oh, person XYZ drew that. I know this one. And a lot of times, this is how they stay. On the surface, it might seem like they stayed absolutely the same throughout all of their years. But obviously, if you study the artist, if you study them in detail, you'll be able to sometimes pinpoint the breaking points in their life when suddenly the topics that they're interested in or the way they paint just switches and changes. Sometimes mental illnesses cause us to be more erratic, right? But other times, even simple changes such as acquiring a skill in a different subject matter will affect how you view art and will affect what you will be drawing. Let's say you start picking up sculpting, you're going to have that deeper understanding of form. You're going to paint the forms in a different way. Maybe you'll be able to showcase more volume. If you do design and pick up on the design principles in more detail and learn how to create awesome compositions with very little shapes, the way you will arrange pieces on your sheet of paper will change drastically. It will improve your shape language. It will improve your understanding of how to draw attention to like certain parts, right? You will know much better how to present your work. Now, the skill itself, uh, I have mentioned examples that are somewhat related to art and have 
similar skill set, right? Or similar soft skill requirements. However, even doing some sport will change the way you view things. Maybe you pick up martial arts, kung fu, right? Well, then you'll have that knowledge or feeling of emotion, the deeply ingrained ingrained understanding of it. So whenever you draw people in motion, it will reflect that. But not only that, because you will spend more time in that sort of sphere of interest, talking to people, thinking about Kung Fu, thinking about the tradition, where it comes from and how it came to be, it will start reflecting itself in the character design choices, in the subject matter choices that you're going to draw. So the conclusion ultimately is to be a good artist, you need to be a student of life. You need to be observant. And think about it. Whenever you draw, you're creating a replica of reality. And the better our understanding of reality is, the better replica can we create. And if even if we're doing something stylized or a fan- fantasy scene, it still bases itself off of our experience and reality. And even if it's a caricature or anime, whatever it is, we're playing with the symbolism and meaning that is ingrained in our brains and into our society to be able to play with these stereotypes or tropes. And sometimes, after you've learned a lot, you need your brain to digest the information. And there is this funny thing of how learning one skill will influence the other one and vice versa. So let's say you've been studying art extensively. You go on a break, you travel somewhere. Your brain is digesting this information, but it's also getting fed a lot more information from the trip Meeting new people, seeing new places, learning about a different culture. And then you come back. You've digested your art information. Maybe some of it you've forgotten. This is absolutely normal. Do not panic. (laughs) And you come back to it. Obviously now with some sort of distance. But also perspective. And as you're working, continuing to work on the art skills again, practicing, drawing, you will be reflecting on your experiences from the travels. See how that goes? And this is the cycle of change (laughs) and improvement. Now, I'll encourage all of you not to be afraid to change your artistic style or to change as people. I mentioned it earlier how some artists just stay very rigid in their ways. It's their decision. But are they really growing? Are they really learning? And I don't want any fears to hold anyone back. Change can be scary. Change can be risky. But without the risk, can we really grow? 
And sometimes, usually not sometimes, most of the cases, we think the change was not worth it. Immediately our gut reaction, no, I want the old me back. Or I want the old circumstances back. But we don't know what the secret benefit was until much later in life. I hope you guys will grow as people, and thus you are too as well.